Divine Truth Documentary Jesus, Mary and Others provide information to people or organizations that produce documentaries. In this video, Jesus is interviewed by Thomas Lita while traveling from his home to Sunshine Coast. This is session 5, filmed on the 13th of August 2013 in Queensland, Australia. Yeah, it's a lovely hour of the day. So, with regard to genetic anomalies such as Down syndrome, all of them can be corrected, but it involves reversing the process that's happened usually over hundreds if not thousands of years in family trees and that can be reversed in one generation if the family is willing to go through the emotional experience of it. The, the problem is that the majority of people are not willing to go through the emotional experience and therefore they retain the injury and so unfortunately the next generation generally has some downs and so forth and some genetic uh, problems happen every second generation um, and, and unfortunately these particular events will continue until the family tree involved removes the particular cause of the problem which is always to do with some kind of emotion or belief that's out of harmony with love inside of both the both sides of the family tree so both the husband's sides and the wife's side of the family tree. So is it possible for the person who has Down syndrome to correct uh, or to change that chromosome? It is certainly possible, but it is much more difficult if they don't have the assistance of their parents doing it for them because the problem with a person who's Down is there's usually some kind of, many times there is some kind of intellectual uh, lack of awareness of the problem. And because of that, it's unlikely that the person will engage the laws involved that would encourage the correction. So they really do need the assistance of the parents. In the spirit world, what they do is they get the assistance of spirits who know about these particular anomalies and how to correct them. And these spirits actually usually heal the anomaly in the child once it arrives in the spirit world. So generally, the healings occur in the spirit world uh, shortly after the child has arrived. Not all times, because it depends upon the will of the person with the Downs as to how that is engaged. If the person with Down syndrome wants to hold on to the family tree and doesn't want to go with the spirits who can basically cure them, then sometimes they will retain the problem for some time, usually some years, until such a time as they finish up uh, deciding to go with the spirits that can cure them and then they get cured. Yeah. And you, you mentioned that um, particular diseases or injuries um, have a, a link to a particular emotion. Yep. Um, can, you, can you give me an example of that? Well, and uh, basically as wide as there are possible emotional experiences causes the wide variety of diseases. So obviously every single disease has its unique signature emotionally as to what is its cause. And, and it depends where the disease is also manifest as to how the, you know, what type of emotion is actually causing the disease. So, so for example, if we look at cancer, which is a very common disease now on the planet, or we look at things like heart disease, and eventually, which usually generally eventually causes heart attack. Uh, if we look at diseases like strokes, all of these, uh, and uh, all of these kind of illnesses slash diseases have specific emotional causes which are identical for each person which has the disease in the same particular area. So, so for example, if a person has, let's say a woman has a cancer in her left breast, then that will be a different emotional cause than if the woman has a cancer in her right breast, and that's a different emotional cause than if the woman has a cancer in her ovaries or in her uterus, and ovaries and uterus are both different emotional causes, and that's different if there is a cancer in the bowel or in the stomach or somewhere else. So every single cancer, for example, 
the different types of cancer have specific emotional causes related to the location where the disease began. And, and these emotional causes are all related to what kind of emotions that a person with, who, who eventually gets cancer is projecting outwards in order to be loved. So it's all about errors in the way in which a person with cancer loves the way in which they see the world, the way in which they love other people is often uh, wanting other people to feed them with specific emotions. And if I can give an example, uh, if a woman has cancer that begins in her left breast, then this is all about projection she has to women, and in particular it would have began with her mother, which is a suppressed rage which is overcoming, uh, which is over the top of an addiction. And the addiction is wanting women to do what she wants in order to receive approval from women. So if, if the cancer is in the right breast, then it will be with men rather than women. So if the cancer began in the right breast, it, this, pro, this emotion, which is the addiction of wanting men to give her approval and acceptance and feelings of being loved by, by basically doing things for the man and hoping that he will love her in the end, these kind of projections outward are what finishes up causing cancer when we have an overlying layer of the suppression of rage. So there's a passive aggression in the anger, if you like. And that's what causes the cancer on the right breast because it's aimed towards the men. If it's on the left breast, it's aimed towards the women. So this is a specific example of how a certain disease that's very, very common on the planet gets caused by the suppression of particular emotions that are out of harmony with love and then and because the person doesn't want to address those specific emotions they eventually exhibit a problem with the body where it starts eating itself away and these particular problems are all have all of them have an emotional cause so even the predisposition of a family tree towards a specific type of disease is related to the family tree having a predisposition towards certain emotions. So there is a correlation between every emotion and its unique way in which it's expressed and when it's out of harmony love with, with regard to the creation of a disease or an illness or even the body's acceptance of viruses or bacteria or other kinds of problems are all related to specific emotional injuries. Because if if you look at HIV, yep, um, and you look at sort of the male gay community, yep, which has a massive devastating effect, what would be the cause of that? Then? Well, you'll note that HIV is also going right the way through the heterosexual community at the moment. So, so while it may, and, and nobody really knows where it began. In fact, there's a supposition that it began in animals like chimpanzees isn't there so so but the reality is that any disease that's related to sexual transmission always has the element of sexual shame involved and unfortunately many people in the gay community as soon as they realize that they are gay they have so much rage and uh, abuse projected at them from the environment that they go into almost this state many of them of fear of not feeling their own sexual shame as a result and I don't feel they need to have any shame the reality is they don't need it but they but because well there's a bushfire up here isn't this quite a big fire actually Someone's probably burnt off and, and it's, it's got out of control. Probably. Yeah. So getting back to the gay community, what happens is that very many gay people from a very young age know that if they admit that they are gay, they admit, admit they are homosexual, that their families will disapprove of them, their friends will disapprove of them. They almost have this automatic feeling, many of them, of feeling sexually ashamed because they are attracted to the same gender and so forth. And these kind of feelings are the result of the projections of the world around them. Because from God's perspective, there's nothing wrong with feeling a same-sex attraction. 
as long as it is engaged in harmony with love. But with the general community's opinion, which is very often religiously based and, uh, and so forth, there is this very strong opinion that uh, there are terrible things that have evolved with same-sex in sexual interaction. And they believe, the general community believes generally because of their religious or other types of backgrounds, you know, uh, males feeling uh, like they are somehow emasculated by, you know, admitting that, uh, that, that their friend is a gay person or something like that. So there's generally a lot of rage and other kinds of emotions projected at a gay person from a very young age. So they grow up in amongst this environment of anger towards their own, gen their own sexuality. As a result, they absorb a lot of shame that is not theirs in the first place, but they absorb it. And then they don't allow the release of it. And, and then, of course, many times they act prom with promiscuity as well, which actually uh, adds to the problem because every time any person is promiscuous, there is going to be also an element of sexual shame involved in their behaviour. So when all of these things add together, there is a large amount of sexual shame. And these cause, um, in, in the per in, in specifically in the gay community, um, sexual illnesses related specifically to those kind of emotions. So the general community has sexual diseases, such as gonorrhea and other types of diseases, um, and those kind of diseases are also related to shame, but they're not related to the shame of being gay. They're related to other types of sexual shame. So every single sexual disease that a person can carry or catch is related at some point to sexual shame or their sexual behaviour. Yeah. Now, this is not saying that a... So, for example, a person who catches gonorrhea um, who's a heterosexual, it doesn't mean that they should be ashamed of their sexuality, that they should be ashamed of being a heterosexual. So, so for the same reason, a person who catches HIV and is, and, and is a gay man shouldn't be ashamed of himself being gay, and that's not the reason why he caught the disease. The reason why he caught the disease is because of the other sexual shame associated with his childhood, his upbringing, what was projected upon him that he hasn't, hasn't allowed himself to feel. And in fact, if he allows himself to feel it, there is a very high chance of him curing the disease without needing medication. Just like there is a high chance of a person with gonorrhea working through their sexual issues, a heterosexual person caught, who's caught gonorrhea have, can work through their sexual issues that have caused their gonorrhea and actually cure their gonorrhea using the same method. You know, it'll be different emotions that they have to go through though. That's the only issue. Sorry, John. So one of the things we need to state, though, is that oftentimes it's not the person who has the disease that is the underlying creator of the emotion that was in them that caused the disease, because oftentimes it's the environment that does that. So it might be their parents or it might be the projections of others. But inside the person there is the suppression of that emotion, and it's the suppression of the emotion that creates the disease. So in the case of sexual shame, it's the oppression or the suppression of the individual who feels sexually ashamed of their sexual shame that causes the disease to manifest itself rather than um, the... So the sexual shame itself probably entered them from someone else, probably entered them from their parents making them feel ashamed or their parents catching them masturbating or something like that and feeling ashamed and feeling ashamed or someone making fun of them about their sexuality making them feel ashamed but it's the suppression of that emotion that creates the disease so if they allowed themselves to feel the emotion when the emotion was created the disease itself would not be created it's also the suppression of the awareness of unloving behavior that creates disease so so for a person who's promiscuous for example the suppression of the awareness of promiscuity being a problem to their body will eventually cause them to catch through the suppression of certain shameful emotions or their conscience bothering them will cause them to catch a certain disease which of course can be cured by them just going through the realizations that uh, you know what they chose to do was out of harmony with love and what 
and out of harmony with love of themselves and out of harmony with love of others and then allowing themselves to work through the reasons why they chose to take actions that were out of harmony with love. So, And this is like God's feedback system. It's not a punishment system. It's a feedback system telling us when we're out of harmony with love of ourselves or love of others and uh, and or even in love of the environment. There are all sorts of feedback systems that occur there as well. And all of these feedback systems are ways that God is showing us that we're out of harmony with God's original intention for the way in which things were created. So I think today you got bitten, didn't you? Yeah, a few I, got, I, got, I got bitten, I got bitten, yeah. yeah. And there's an indication there that there's something out of harmony with love inside of yourself in relation to how you see insects and the environment. Does that make sense? How I see the insects? Yeah. So your, aver- your, your general feeling towards insects that bite you is what, what would be your general <laughs> feeling? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't particularly like insects that bite me, no. no. And you'd probably kill them, wouldn't you? Like spray them or something uh, like that generally? No, or? see, for instance, a spider at home, I'll put in a glass and right, I'll, I'll yeah. take it outside. Right, so if um, it's a certain type of creature, you'll take it out, like an arachnid, you'll take oh, it out. Oh, yeah, but if there's maggots and things in the bin... and Then you'll kill those? Uh, I haven't right. killed them, but I have What about mosquitoes? We don't have mosquitoes. No, but you've been bitten by some midges and mosquitoes here. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel towards them? I, yeah, there wasn't a great love I felt no. towards the mosquito, I yeah. must admit. Um, and a lot of I times what we're feeling is attacked, right? We feel. I think it's probably, if you're talking about the fear, it's probably all of the, the fear of the spider and the fear of the snake in Australia. Yeah, but it's actually the midges and the mosquitoes that have bitten you bitten the most. Me, yeah. Which is an indication of the fact the the, uh, the openness to being attacked by the wor- by the natural world around you. So as you close that down emotionally, what happens? You have less and less to. Uh, openness to attack and all of the insects will work in harmony with that so they won't attack you anymore so you get to the point when you're at one with God that no insect attacks you no spider will bite you no snake will bite you no no creature will harm you you can be with a wild animal a wild bear or anything and it won't harm you because it's in you're in complete harmony with love and it knows that and is automatically sensitive to that and cannot react as a result so if you look at nature, mm-hmm. so there are lots of things that don't look, don't particularly look like they're in harmony with love, like the lion chasing the antelope. Or Correct. So definitely not in harmony with love. So, can you explain to me a little bit why why that, that's occurring? Yeah, certainly. What, the reason why all of these things are not in harmony with love is because mankind has acted out of harmony with love and the universe around mankind is tuned into the soul condition of mankind so so if mankind's general soul condition is a certain in a certain direction then the universe around mankind generally will respond to the soul condition of the person at the time so if we look at how mankind generally treats others so generally stronger people attack weaker people on the planet they they generally try to attack weaker people. In fact, they feel that because they're weak, it gives them an excuse to attack them, in fact. And this particular emotion acts out in nature. And it's a reflection to humanity that their emotion is out of harmony with love. And once humanity generally cures that emotion, then the action of what we call nature will drastically change into being also in harmony with love. So what's happening in nature reflects the poor soul condition. When I say the poor soul condition, I'm talking about the condition in love inside of humanity is reflected by the, all of the creatures that we have in our environment. So if we look at uh, a lot of the things that happen generally in our environment, we see, for example, generally that when a locust plague begins, it devastates every single living thing. Right? Every little single living plant in their radius is eaten to the ground. Right? Now, that is also a reflection of humanity's condition. If you look at humans' uh, interaction with nature, we act in the same way with nature. Pretty much every single thing that we can use in nature, we use and we rip out of the ground, and we take it away and we don't replace it, we don't, we don't know how to look after it. And so the, the insects, in this case, are just reflecting our condition. And the entire world at the moment, what we see as natural, 
is actually, from God's perspective, very unnatural. Not, it's not what God originally intended these creatures to do. But what humanity has done is walked away from love, walked away God's intention and as a result of walking away from God's love and intention they've now acted out of harmony with love through the use of their will and now the way God's created the universe around them is that now the universe around them will reflect to humanity their unloving behavior and their their disharmony with love and this is a perfect system in operation giving feedback to humanity that we're not acting in harmony with love and if we choose to act in harmony love, a lot of these so-called things that seem unloving in nature, that we call natural, we will find later down the track are not a part of nature and in fact are quite unnatural. And they're only caused by the hu human uh, collectively deciding to act out of harmony with love. Yeah. So are you okay? Yeah, just give me two. Okay. So would you say that nature therefore is a mirror of our souls. Yes, exactly. There are many things actually that are a mirror of our souls. Our eyes are a mirror of our own personal soul, but nature is more of a mirror of the collective condition of humanity. So, and But that being said, a person who individually becomes at one with God and clears away these particular unloving behaviours will find that, that, that the nature around them will respond to the loving condition of their own soul. So when they love themselves, the nature won't attack them anymore. When they love others, the nature won't attack the things they love anymore, and so forth. There's, there's a direct reflection in amongst the conditions surrounding the individual, but also collectively, the, in a country and even in the entire world, there is a condition that, that the nature in that particular locations, in those locations, reflects. Yeah. So it's a perfect system to give us feedback. We're co God's constantly trying to give us feedback to show us what's going wrong. And humanity generally is not responding. And, uh, and we want to, basically what we want to do to nature is rule it. We want to control it. We want to, we want to bend it to our own needs and circumstances without any long-term future uh, examination of what's actually happening and without any care. So you see, for instance, in countries of Europe where many forests have been cut down over millennia and so there's really not many natural forests left anymore and, and we don't see that as a problem. But, but there is the reflection of that problem occurring in those forests where there's a degradation of the amount of species diversity, there's diseases that can be cured by certain species that are now, you know, particularly certain you know plant species that now you know are almost extinct or near extinction and and so these kind of problems are reflecting back to us that our choices are out of harmony with love and we need to change and God's constantly showing humanity how we can change but humanity is constantly ignoring the issue generally we are creating a bigger um, desire generally to manipulate nature to suit our personal selfish desires rather than considering the long-term future of the planet or the long-term future of human society. And that's the reason why we have this increasing demonstration from nature that something is wrong. You know. So you said the eyes are the mirrors of your soul. Yes, yeah. The eye is a, an interesting part of our body in that uh, the, the crevices and cracks that appear in the coloured area around our pupil uh, demonstrate different injuries inside of the body itself. And all of these injuries are caused by some kind of emotional condition or a condition that's out of harmony with love, and all of them can be corrected. A person who approaches uh, at one moment with God has a completely clear iris, and in fact, when you become at one with God, your complete iris is completely clear of any spots or and uh, and this is also an indication that every time we look in the mirror we can see our own injuries if we knew where the injuries are so there are people now who have made a map of the iris both left and right eyes and and they're able to associate certain problems in certain bo body 
parts and functionings that are related to the reflection of the part, part in the eye. So they know there is a correlation of those things, but unfortunately they haven't taken that to the next step and actually looked at how to remove these particular problems from the eye. Because a baby is not born with those particular injuries and, and in fact is generally born with a relatively clear iris. And it's only uh, uh, usually beyond the age of two or three when the emotional impact of, and suppression that is involved with the family suppression of emotions has built up to such an extent that the blemishes start appearing in the child's eyes. You okay, Si? Yeah, it's, it's getting very dark. Can you just touch the AC again, darling? Sure, baby. So, you were mentioning about um, regenerating your body. Mm. Um, so, is there is there every? Because you were saying that at 25 years of age, that's kind of when the regeneration stops. Well, it doesn't stop instantly. It stops slowly over periods of time, depending on the degenerative condition of the emotions that are involved. So, there'll be parts of the body that still replicate perfectly after that point in time, but there will be other parts of the body that are being affected by the degenerative emotional condition that cause uh, a invalid, or what you would call a, a damaged replication of the cell structure, which then causes aging. So, um, so that's the direct result. Uh, the direct result is first gonna manifest in the areas of the body where you have the dominant emotional suppression. So, if your dominant emotional suppression is about speaking the truth to others, for example, then the degenerative parts will start at your throat. As a, as a, that's an example of what might happen. What about eyesight? Mm -hmm. What is that? A, uh... Well, it depends whether the person is short-sighted, uh, long-sighted, has astigmatism problems, and each one obviously has different emotional causes. So in the case of someone like myself, who is short-sighted, who can see short distance but not long distance, there's a fear of the future that they need to address. So that's the issue that I need to work through regarding myself. And a lot of times uh, it's about seeing yourself and seeing others. You know, so um, oftentimes when you're short-sighted you start to see yourself a bit more accurately, but how you see the universe around you is still needing work sometimes. So it just depends on the type of problem the individual has and what eye they have it in, left or right, will, do, will have a different, uh, usually a different cause as well. So it just depends on those causes. I'm just going to make it.